It takes a tremendous amount of courage to follow a new direction in life, to build a tiny house, downsize all of your belongings, and move that home from one end of the country right the way to the other. And that is exactly what this mother-daughter duo have done. And today we're here in Penticton to check it out. Hi, Serena. How's it going? Good. How are you? Great. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Hi, Madison. Lovely to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. This is such a funky looking tiny house that you've got here. Thank you. And this is really quite some parking spot that you've managed to find for it as well. Yeah, we're quite lucky. We got the end lot. <laughs> Very nice scenery. So we're in an RV park right now. How difficult was it for you to find a place to park the tiny house here? It was actually quite difficult because before I built the tiny house, the first thing is to find an actual place that would take a tiny house, right? Because you're not a house, but you're not a trailer. Yeah. So anyway, it just happened to be at the right time where there was new owners and this used to be a old go-kart area and turned into an RV park and we were the first yeah. ones here. Yeah. So it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to choose our spot and overlooks the lake, so it's really nice. Yeah. Awesome neighbors too. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and you're right. Being able to have the lake views is just the icing on the cake, isn't it? Definitely, exactly. definitely. What was it that actually inspired you to build this tiny house? Two years ago, when I came home from work, my daughter Madison was watching a show <laughs> and yeah. uh, she knows that I love interior design and things like that. And she told me to come sit on the couch and the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect all this to come from it. I just thought that she would enjoy it because of her interest in design and everything like that. But it turned out to, she really liked it. <laughs> yeah, where well, you can design yeah. your own place and take it with you if you want to move. So yeah. I found that really interesting and yeah. just went for it. So a big part of the adventure in starting into the tiny house living uh, was back probably about three years ago when I was taking care of my mom and unfortunately she passed away. But before she passed away, we were talking about all the things that she wanted to do. And that got me thinking, life is so short to not do what we want. And I think we um, go into life thinking that uh, it may be too scary not knowing all the answers and not just dive into that. So she was a big part in that. And so building the tiny house was uh, not just a tiny house thing that I was into, but it was the whole adventure. And, and I'm really glad that I did that. And speaking of moving, you actually designed this in Winnipeg and drove it all the way here to BC, didn't you? Yeah, so on one of the shows on TV, I saw this particular house and then kind of just tweak it myself and got a, a builder out there and hired some contractors and yeah, to move it, to pull it out here. What was the process of towing this house all the way from Winnipeg to BC like? Um, well, initially I wanted to travel behind it and watch it like a little baby, but I thought, no, it's too nerve wracking and uh, maybe put bubble wrap around it. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> so yeah, no, it was a good company we found, a family owned company that travels from Winnipeg to BC on a weekly basis and it was it was good. Yeah, there's no, a lot of windows yeah. too and, and it came in one piece so exactly. we were happy. Exactly, no windows broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now tell me about the design and the style of the tiny house. Well, my design of the house, I love like shabby chic, I love cabin, I love beach lake, you know, and especially living right across from the lake. Just I thought all the blues and something to pop. And then it's kind of like has a modern feel as well to mix the moderns with the beachy. And, I just, I think it works. <laughs> it certainly does. And what size is this tiny house? So it is uh, 28 feet long, about eight and a half feet wide, and uh, it's about 380 square feet. For the size of this tiny house, you certainly did not hold back on putting in windows, did you? Yeah, <laughs> no. This was the reason why I chose like this design, because living tiny, I didn't want to feel like crowded or anything. And then being in a house with lots of windows, you know, you can sit on the couch and you can see, it you know, opens the space yeah, yeah. see the sky and things like that. You don't feel like it's 380. Yeah. But yeah. the downside is it does get hot. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And then I see you've capitalized on this fantastic parking spot by adding this huge deck to the tiny house. And this is a really nice extension to it, isn't it? Yeah. It's really important, like, to have outside space living in a tiny house, yeah. especially, like, in the summertime because we gave up our dining room. Although, I have to say, we didn't use the dining room. <laughs> we had a normal house. 
Um, it just adds a lot more mm -hmm. space when you can like extend your home outside. So yeah. we really like spending time out here when we, it's nice out. We eat suppers <laughs> out here and have yeah. breakfast and stuff, so it's really nice. And Madison, you have recently moved out of the tiny house because you are starting a new family. Yeah. But this has kind of been a home base for you over the last couple of years, hasn't it? Exactly, yeah. I've spent a lot of time over the past few years traveling and things like that, but it's always been nice to have a place to come back to. And I've Yeah, really and I don't mind it. either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now you have to make a home of your own and <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Exactly. But she'll come back. She always does. <laughs> well, it's wonderful that you've created this jewel loft design so that there's always room for family when they want to come stay, right? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Well, the house looks really lovely from the exterior, especially this here just overlooking the lake. The spot is so idyllic and I am very excited to check out the inside. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Let's do it. Thank All you. Right. This is just so nice. It really has kept that very beach house feel, hasn't it? Yeah, I tried to keep the, the color scheme going throughout the house, like a beach teal type of colors, and you know, it flows throughout. Very nice. And then entering the home, we are immediately in your kitchen. Yeah, it's a galley kitchen. It uh, has good cupboard space and has like a pull-out um, garbage, because I can't imagine not having space for a garbage <laughs> in such a narrow space. Very true. Um, apartment size fridge and this cabinet here actually was a freestanding cabinet that I saw immediately I'm like okay I'm cutting off the legs and I'm going to brace it and put it on the wall <laughs> and it worked it didn't fall yet <laughs> very good so how do you find the kitchens working for you now it does work I have everything that I need for it I could always use more cupboard space but it's it's functional it's good it's everything that I need and then what do we have behind us here uh, well, so because my daughter took over my closet, <laughs> I just added an additional temporary closet that I made. I just put a attention bar with curtains for my own closet. And then uh, when she takes out her clothes, I will make it into, I was thinking, another additional uh, kitchen space, more cabinets there. And then for the three here, we have your lounge. Yeah, so here is the living area where we spend a lot of our time. And our two lofts, my daughter's loft is here. It's a double loft, and this is a queen size. And this actually, this was my headboard for my bed. Really? Um, yeah, so I just, actually the wood comes from a cabin in Ontario, and I just cut it in half and use it as dividers. I think it's, it's that lovely. beachy, worn yeah. out beachy <laughs> vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it's always especially nice when you can bring those feature elements from a previous home into a new space, isn't it? Yeah, because it just feels like home when you can bring that in. And the chandelier came from my house as well in my dining room. I thought that was kind of a classy, girly touch. <laughs> and the circle feature window there is quite special, isn't it? Yeah, I do get a lot of comments about that window. It's very pretty, lots of light through there. This is actually just stick on so it gives privacy and leaves out the light a little bit but uh, i'm still looking for a good solution for it. i'm thinking about uh, shutters custom made eventually and it's really nice how you've got the barn door there with the full length mirror on it yeah i really enjoy that especially getting ready you can see yourself getting yeah. ready and it just opens up the space more i enjoy it and then with the lounge area here you've got a comfortable looking sofa mm -hmm. television everything you need exactly yeah i don't think i need much more i think my favorite spot would be the bathtub well, all right, should we check that out then? Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely see why the bathtub is one of your favorite features. It's always just so luxurious being able to have a bath in a tiny house, isn't it? It is, and especially when you have your neighbors who don't have a full bathtub, they actually want to come here and, uh, <laughs> and have a bath. It's Wait, so true. Has anyone done yes. that? Yes, yes. I've never, I didn't know that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's wrong. <laughs> He fixes things and he's like, can I have a bath for them? I'm like, absolutely. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Now that is that. definitely being neighborly, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then this vanity uh, here is so nicely done. What a wonderful feature. Yeah, thank you. It was actually my daughter's dresser back in her hometown. And I'm just happy enough to bring it here and convert it into a sink. And it works and painted, of course, the same color as the, the house game, BG. And in this bathroom, I noticed you've also got a full washing machine as well. Mm -hmm. It's a, a washer-dryer combo. The downsize is it does little loads, whatever. It takes a few hours for a couple towels, but it's in here, so it works. 
and you've got a flushing toilet in here as well. And I suppose that being parked up at an RV park, that is one of the real advantages to it because you can just hook into all of that existing infrastructure and sewage, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really nice to have these conveniences. Power, sewer, water. Yeah, it's all supplied here. It's a great RV park. It certainly is. Nice and easy. And then should we have a look at the sleeping lofts? Sure. So Madison, before you moved out, this was your sleeping loft, right? It was, it was. It's kind of funny because now I can't actually get up there right now with the pregnancy and all, <laughs> but I enjoyed my time up there when I was up there. Right, the pitfalls of ladders, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well can I take a peek up there anyway? Yeah, go ahead. All right. This is really nice. So what was it like for you being up here? I really liked it. I felt kind of like camping, but in my house. We were right across from the lake, and so I got really nice views. And this will still be a really special place for you to be able to come home. Yeah, exactly. It's also nice guest space if anyone comes And she'll visiting. be able to climb it soon. <laughs> yeah. And then your loft Serena is over the other side. Yeah. Do you want to take a look? Let's take a look. Alrighty. This is really sweet. And again, you've just styled it all so nicely up here. Well, thank you. I tried to keep the beachy feel and the colors, the teals and things like that. The AC is nice because on such high ceilings, you need that extra cool. And I just made the headboard out of some scrap wood that I had and some extra material. And uh, it works good. Very nice. And so how are you finding life in the tiny houses working out for you? It's working out really well. It's uh, quite an accomplishment to be in a tiny living space and doing it yourself. It's wonderful. I completely agree. And Madison, what's next for you, life after the tiny house? Ooh, another adventure, I guess. Not a tiny house adventure, but we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. And so having this tiny house experience in your later teenage years, is this now a living option that you would one day consider for your family? I would consider it. Um, if she designed it herself, she would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now knowing like things that we didn't know already, then I could kind of take and learn from that and build something specifically to what I need. And yeah, I would consider it. The experience of the tiny house has taught me, basically looking from my mom's example, she's just really great at just going with it. You know, so a lot of people are afraid like nowadays of what might happen and I know a lot of people who want to move but they're too scared or they worry about this but she was really good at just knowing what she wanted and going after it. Yeah, it's just taught me to um, just go for it. You don't need to know all the answers in order to pursue something and you don't need to succeed in something, you know, you just, just continue to try. And the home here is beautifully done and it's super cool that you've got a lot of DIY elements to this build as well. Can you tell me what it actually costs to build? Initially for the shell, I would say approximately around 50,000 and then added in with the furniture and the floors and things like that. So I think the outcome would be around 60, I would say, 60, 65. That is a fantastic result, and especially now, you have your very own beautiful, almost a lakeside home. Now that's priceless. <laughs> that is absolutely priceless, I agree. Well, all of your hard work has definitely paid off in this home. I love the way that you've really pulled off that beach house vibe. Thank you so much for sharing your home Thank with you me. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> In life, it's so natural for each of us to have fears and reservations, things that hold us back and stop us from doing the things that we really want in the world. And what's wonderful about Serena and Madison's story is that they saw something they wanted and just went for it. And the result is this, a beautiful home in a brand new province and a wonderful new start to life.